Welcome to another edition of Voice of the Diaspora. In studio with me today is uh, a Lindener who is doing a really great job with her charitable organization, which she's helping the destitute at Linden. She will be talking to us about what it all entails. Uh, she will tell us a bit of, about her organization. She will give us some information about the organization. So you, the viewers who are watching, um, can have access um, to the information and able to make contact with her uh, to help if you so wish to do. Um, of course, Akalora Thomas is here with us, um, a Lindener, who is uh, doing a lot of work in, in, in the poorer communities, helping destitute single parents, uh, you know, uh, living on the conditions that are, you, know, you, you, you can't imagine. And so I want to bring Akalora in now to join the program. Akalora, welcome to Voice of the Diaspora. How are you feeling? Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm feeling wonderful, but a bit tired. Okay. Well, I'm not going to keep you. I'm not going to keep you for very long. But let us start by by having you tell us what is. Give us a little information about your charitable organization and you know what it entails what you do and why you do it <laughs> okay good question um the organization really is to help the vulnerable families within the um block 22 and neighboring community as um we may call it the annaville and Proud of Vale or Prospect Vale, if I got it right. Um, we have a lot of families who are struggling, real struggle in the community. And um, this is something that I grew up into with my father. Um, I don't know persons know um, him, Aku. Um, at, at a tender age, he taught us to be caring and um, always show the humanitarian service to um, to others. So what we what we do in in um, be the change is that we have um, a program where we um, donate clothing. We ask persons um, in the diaspora more of, and persons right in the community, you know, whatever they have and they you know they don't use it, you know, donate to us and we would give it to the vulnerable families. Also, what we will do is ask persons to look within the cupboards and, you know, you might get an extra pint of peas that, you know, you're not using or a pack of chow mein or soap, whatever. And we put these um, items together and we make up these ample baskets and we distribute them to families. Another thing that we start doing is um, giving hot meals to school children. We want the children to be in school, even though it's a pandemic and um, we start preparing hot meals so we prepare hot meals every wednesday okay so so you've got a lot on your hand that you're doing and oh how, how, how is it progressing are you getting the support from from the community and um perhaps some people wider feel uh, what is the response and you know well we're young and we're getting there um, persons see what I'm doing and they, they love it because um, most persons know my father and you know this is something that he used to do so you know they're supporting me yes I'm getting the support and so up to, emotionally when you would have gone into those areas and and see the conditions you know the, the, those conditions that those single parents are living on the, or families are living on the, with, with, with very young children. Uh, um, how do you feel? How do you... Um... <laughs> well, if I should tell you, words can't ex explain how I feel because most time I just be crying. Um, the, the, the people that um, would go out in the field with me, most times they say, 
this is not something that you know you really get in mind to you, you love it but then um you have to build a heart that when you, you're dealing with people it, it need not to be so sad because Norman had cry. And I can understand that. Um, I mean, you you have you have grown up with your dad, seeing your dad Aku, who who, who um, was a, a original vice chairman, um, died tragically uh, while on duty and so on. And um, he was he was a community servant. I I've had the opportunity and the pleasure to have worked with him um, as a youngster. Uh, and so on and of course he was also someone who would have brightened our childhood while at school with 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 you know making eggs come out of our behinds and so on magic he was what you call a magic man and so you you you, you know you were t you you were now f taking up um what your dad used to do but i want to know when you um when you speak to those single parents mom mothers sorry and um outside of providing clothing and other stuff food stuff and and the hot meals for the children's one have you tried to you, you you when you look at the untenable condition that they're living under the houses you know i mean snakes can crawl into those places you know it, it's it's terrible it's it's not fit for human beings much less dogs and and that is how and you know they are living have you contacted any relevant authorities in guyana um to bring this sort of awareness to them to say that outside of my charitable work or so on i think that the ministry of social services or you know other relevant organization the welfare department at linden uh, uh and so on have you been in consultation with them to do their part yes i did um a few weeks ago i spoke with the regional chairman i paid him a courtesy call and I even had a talk with um, the CDC. I think he's, he's a part of the CDC. Um, uh, Mr. Philip Fordyce. I spoke with him and I, I asked him to liaison with the young woman because um, I have a family who's living in the Block 22 area. Our house is made out of um, these reject woods that we go, we stack them a Meg Boro, Boro stick. Okay. So I um, I showed him the video, both himself and wife, and I asked them if they can, um, you know, go to their ministry and see what help they can, you know, provide this family with. Because um, I know that they can get things done too. I spoke with the original chairman and, you know, for me, I said, wherever the help come from, that's it. So, Wonderful. the 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 house is not con is not is not conducive to human because to me I look at this as just a vine a place for for vine to run on. And um, when whenever it rains, um, it is be real terrible because the the house it made out of the strip and the black plastic and um. They well she 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 get on with name the roof but the roof you know when you look you could see airplane passing through so yeah oh in, in your estimation in your estimation uh doing this charitable work and you would have you know you would be you would be familiar maybe right across linden with those families who are living under those conditions how many families you think we're talking about and in in in, in what areas of the, you know the uh, it's most prevalent or more prevalent like is, is it people from wisdom is it people from mackenzie how many families you think how many families you think at linden would be living under these um adverse conditions well, if I am to say, I will say at least 50%, 50%. to be honest, 50%, yes. And, um, I mean, this is this is a political program, but we're not going to go political. But what, do, <laughs> well, when you look at the ethnic makeup of most of those families, what what, what is that ethnic makeup? 
Well, for me, I've been working with um, all ethnicity. And for me, mostly is um, Negro. It's black people. Let us go. Let yeah. us go to um. Let us go to a clip uh, uh, for the diaspora and people at home to see uh, you out there. Uh, you know, doing your work and highlighting, the, you know, the plight that that, that these destitute uh, people are, are Lindeners, uh, citizens of Linden, and the plight they are living under. Rear that really needs the help. Sorry. This is what feed America's. Are. Block 22, squatting area. Um, I would have met with this young lady here that is holding this baby. Now, this is her um, living condition. Um, it, it bleeds my heart um, that, you know, she's here with two babies. I mean, she's trying. But um, as persons within this community, I think we can do something as to assist her, right? Uh, so that's you there appealing to the community. You recorded um, what you were doing. We're seeing like, it's so touching to see you know, how, how under those conditions they live. You can see these little children, they're still happy and the dangerous aspect of that is that they are going to grow thinking to live in that way is okay it's ordinary it, it's natural and so on um if you were to before we go to the next clip because i wanted to i wanted you to comment on this clip uh on you know with with someone recognizing another family uh at linden who who live who is living under these conditions um so when you when you are doing this job do you think about contacting the government to say to them look we're talking about all slots we're talking about all these things but there are people on the ground right there that need the help right now we need cement to put a little concrete structure to keep the weather out to keep the reptiles out to, to ensure that these children don't get sick we are living in a, a, a covid pandemic era and 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 these these families are more vulnerable uh, to, to certain things how do you intend to address that outside of uh calling for donations and support well, I plan to visit the president myself and um, show him what I'm doing and, and plead with him. That's all I can do to assist because that's that's how far I can go. And I, I think that that's, that's a good move. I think that's a good move and that should be done as early as possible and that that should be publicized also. Of course, we will be doing our part in supporting you, as I'm saying here now, to the people in the diaspora and at home, across Guyana and across the world. Um, you can always contact Akalora. Um, she will be able to give you the contact details here on the program and our, you can go, into our, go to our Facebook page or inbox her and, and make arrangements uh, to, to assist. But these families outside of food and clothing, they need to hide to be relocated temporarily in somewhere that is safe for the children and suitable. And um, until little structures can be put together for them, I, you know, we can begin to chip in with bags of cement. We can do whatever because we, we cannot have uh, uh, um, our poor people living uh, under those conditions. And I'm happy that you have taken the charge to, to begin in, in a small way. And our support is to ensure that you grow from strength to strength and that you can see also that you may be responsible for a project of building a two bedroom concrete bungalow so that these people can live in an environment conducive to their yes. to their healthy um welfare and so on let us go to this clip and let us talk about it for a moment Rear that really needs the help this is what feed america is all about to come in to help the poor communities like this here and um this is where oh and this is where this is where she lives at brother young man this is where she lives at oh wow 
Wow. Oh, God. I can see that size. Yes, yes, you should really need help. Oh, God. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're here to do. It's a, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Hello. hello, 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 hello. Hi, hi. How are we doing? Hi. hi how are we doing? How are we doing? What's your name? What's your name? Right. Yannick Stewart. Yannick Stewart. Oh, oh, this is what's so. What's going on? You live here? Yes. This is your house. Yeah. Can I get a look around? Wonderful. Wow, wow. Welcome, okay, welcome. okay. This is where she lives here. Um, this is where she lives that day. Yeah. This is what we're talking about. If we come to help, you know. Uh, there's no windows, there's just a door. And um, tell me about your family, tell me about your family, tell me about your family. How much kids you having? Eight, eight, eight kids, eight, eight kids she's having. Father's that gone, so it's wow. up to me alone. Even if I say I want to go and do a yard work, uh -huh. I will still study eight them kids. for the foundation of the place. Wow, so wow, 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 wow. So you need help. Wonderful. What, what could we help you with in terms of these kids, these eight kids? What would you like? You like, see, you want some clothes for sure. Um, so what the, the roof. Performance of the place. That's what I'm trying to see if you could help you. Do you have it's a stove where you stove? There's not many nights you see serpents. Wow. Yes. So this is your bed here, you like that one? Yeah, there's one. There's oh, no sun, and this is. Oh, my God. This is where the eight kids sleep. This is where the eight kids sleep. Yeah. So that is touching. And when I saw it at first, tears came to my eyes. Um, we, we, it, there is, there is something in 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 this mother's plight that that indicates that our society is cold and heartless and remains um, not understanding people's personal problems and things that are beyond them. This is a woman who I understand in my research is mentally ill to some extent mentally, mentally challenged this is a woman who it is very clear in her condition men are still pursuing her and impregnating her and leaving she has hate she has sorry she has eight children and um they have fathers out there what where are welfare office welfare officers who can make an evaluation and, 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 and find those fathers and do DNA tests and so on to make sure that they contribute by law to supporting their children, to the support of, of, of those children. Nothing seems to be done. I think that people in that community would say, well, oh, she's just crazy, you understand, you know, and, and nobody seemed to care that these are children growing up under these conditions, mm -hmm. and, 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 and more so, these are black children. And we're talking at the moment, and we're in Black History Month, and we have to say to all those that are responsible in our society, who, has a resp who, who will have the responsibility for providing for um, the people in our communities that that they should be ashamed of themselves. What are your What are your thoughts when you look at that that um, that clip there? Um, it's it's very touching. Um, even though you know the the, the mother is mentally challenged, um, at the end of the day, um, there's children. The big picture is the children. What are we going to do as a community for the children? Um, it's sad. Because when I saw it too, it, it brought tears to my eyes. And um, I, I think we can help as a community. We can help as a community. It takes a village. It takes a village. And um, I'm happy that you're here to highlight, of course, if you want to say to the viewers now uh, how they can contact you. If there's a number, if there's an email address, you can take your time and, and say it. And of course, you know, I'm sure that okay, you're going to you. get response. <laughs> okay, Positive thank response. you. Um, my, 
Yes, my um, cell phone number is 649-888-6649-8886. And you can look for us on Facebook at Be The Change. So we have a page up and we, whenever we go out into the field and, you know, we just make posts. Okay, so tell us. So you can follow us. Mm -hmm. tell, just tell us in closing, we got about two minutes. Tell us in closing, what are the steps you said you, you, you're you going to write the president or you're going to visit the president? Uh, that's one step to I'm highlight not, the plight. <laughs> um, I'm not going to write. I no. believe in when I see you, I, I, I read your eyes and I know if you will help me or not. Yeah. But there should be a paper trail also that, you know, that, you know, a year down the line, if they said that, you know, uh, we don't recall politicians, we don't recall, you know, we don't recall, <laughs> we, we see so many people and, and try to dent your credibility. That is true. You have to have a paper trail. We have to begin to, you know, do these things, send an email, outlining whatever, and then we visit and, and that kind of stuff. And so that there's evidence there uh, at any time that it has to be uh, looked at and thing. What do you want to say to the people of Linden in closing? Be the change. It's only you can be the change. And they said it takes a community to raise a child. If I get it right. Yeah, it takes a village. So, yeah. okay. A community also. <laughs> so you can do your part in whatever little way that you can. If it's a pint of rice, that's what you can afford because um be the change would put together a meal and distribute it to children. We will put it in a basket and distribute it to homes. We will put um if it's two pieces of clothes. If that's what we have, we put it in a basket or a bag and we give it to families. So if you want to be that change, come on board with be the change. Well, persons have contacted me already, um, inbox me saying they need contact, they need your contact, and I would have pointed them to your your Facebook uh, inbox, your messenger, and said, you, you know, Isaac Laura Thomas and so on, and, and I would have done that. I want to congratulate you on, on what you're doing. I want to commend you for um, for taking up this challenge. It's selfless and it's, it's really caring. And I am sure that with the publicity and the help that you will be getting over time, that your work would grow from strength to strength and people's poverty and, and pains would be alleviated and you will be remembered as one of those Lindeners who would have made a difference. Akalora Thomas, thank you for being on the program and um, I hope to have you back on the program sometime in the future when the progress would be more. Uh, um, so yes. thank you very much for being on the program. And thank you for having me. And remember, be the change. <laughs> be the change. That was Akalora Thomas uh, talking about her organization, her charitable work. She's been helping the poor or the destitute, I should say, in our community. And I hope that you guys um, abroad and at home would take up the, 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 the mantle in lending her the support, um, in lending her the support, thus ensuring that people's lives, these of our, of our citizens who are unfortunate and living under these conditions, that their lives would improve, that their children would have an opportunity to understand what living really is and living properly. And so I, I really commend her, Linda or Akalora Thomas, who is doing a tremendous, um, who's doing tremendous work in and around the Linden community. I have another guest joining me to talk about um, what is happening in relation to Linden and its development and some of the current affairs that we, um, you know, 
that we're dealing with at the moment. Um, and so Mark A. Jordan, a Linden, uh, Linden uh, uh, is here with me on Voice of the Diaspora. Mark, welcome to the program. Hi, good night, Norman. How are you? Well, I'm good. I'm good. It's been a long day, thanks. but the struggle yeah, continues. Thanks, thanks for having me on your program. Yeah, you know, it's refreshing to see all the Lindeners um, finally waking up and realizing the importance of um, representing themselves and making representations um, for the betterment and the development of um, the community. Before we go into our discourse, just 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 give us a little. Just let the, the viewers know who is Mark. Um, when I'm when I'm introducing my my guests on this program, I like I like my viewers to know who they are. You know, briefly. Uh, you know, it's important that they know who who, who um, they're well, talking um, to, speaking to them. I'm a Lyndon. I was born in Mackenzie, in Mackenzie Hospital. Um, spent most of my formative years in, in linden i went to school at rutuka day school um that's in rutuka um and then i went to school in georgetown so you know but would always spend the summer vacation and so forth in um in linden you know so i've i've been very much attached to the to the community uh, my both of my grandparents my grandmother was an educator in Linden, you know, Mr. Jordan, a lot of teachers, you know, she trained teachers, um, very um, passionate about teaching people to read and, um, you know, imparting our knowledge. Literacy, and helping, yeah. Yeah, parents, you know, reading was her passion and she, you know, right up to her death, she was committed to that. My grandfather also worked with the guy mine um, company and also shared his knowledge. Um, he was the former um, national awardee and he shared his knowledge at the Linden Technical Institute after he retired from Gaiman. So, you know, these are people that have given to the community and um, growing up seeing that, you know, I couldn't help but feeling attached to the company, um, to the community. I mean, I've migrated, but I still have that connection. And, you know, I visited and, you know, felt the pain when you see what Linden is now as compared to what it used to be. Um, you know, but I think back then, both sides of the divide, people were less critical of, of their leaders. And, you know, I guess with time brings wisdom and people have realized now that, um, you know, you have to speak up and the time has come for that. And it's refreshing, as I said, you know, people like yourself and Otto and all the others. Uh, earlier, I was looking at a program where um, Figuero and Austin some of the others, leaders who are, um, you know, expressing their views and talking about the whole um, McKenzie Sports Club situation. So I think um, it's a step in the right direction. I mean, a lot of people might beg to differ and say it's a lot of talk, it's a talk shop, but um, we're seeing results with these, um, highlighting these issues. And I think um, from that, you know, it's going to stem and move forward to other programs and other um, steps and you know poverty alleviation and eradication is one of the things one of the directions we need to move towards you know i think as you know as learning as we got to come together and then uh, you know be more ambitious and and, and and more resolute in terms of developing the society at you know I think also we have to have measurable goals. I think that is something in the past we have not been doing. We did not measure performance, and you know that allowed the leaders to 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 underperform or to overestimate what they have done. So we have to move towards that. You know, holding them accountable and having them, you know, come to us and report to us. They work with us. You know, so I think. With the absence of the big investments in Linden, you know, everybody working with the company and so forth, we might have to be very creative in what we attempt to do moving forward. And, you know, agriculture is one of the areas that there is scope. Um, I heard the youngster Goring spoke On about it, and I think um, that's something we need to work towards and, and probably collaborate, have these you know, co-ops where we could co pool resources and, 
you know, I know historically we've been indifferent towards farming, but time has passed and, you know, we have to use, play the cards we dealt with more or less to see how we could remedy things. And, you know, that's my input. I think we huh? definitely have to look towards agriculture. That's the only thing we have that's in our favor and that's readily available at present. At present, yeah. And of course, that's absolutely uh, spot on. That's absolutely spot on. You have come on the scene um, as a bright spark recently. And I, I, I know that you actually were the person who would have um, who would have recommended that that Otto's uh, show be called the Small Man Show, I think. Um, it, I think a suggestion was made by yourself or or maybe i'm wrong but well, probably i i don't know sometimes you know we speak but i i mean but the it, thing it is speaks volumes yeah know? the thing it, is it definitely is that, a small one show yeah it, it, the thing is is that when you look at Otto's show it's 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 raw it's it's yes, it's, it's, it's something that you could be lying in your bed or sitting on your toilet seat authentic and let an ordinary man you don't have to polish your words you don't have to whatever but you can bring out the pain and the, the you know the anguish that you're feeling as the ordinary man who may be shy to go on travis chase or gordon mosley or even this voice of the diaspora because they feel as if you know i, I can't uh you know i wouldn't fit in so can't articulate their views yeah but but going back to because you mentioned when you started you mentioned the the program that include that in that mr bino um mp german Figuera, region 10 mp german Figuera, and um darren adams who's the regional chairman they would have come on a program this evening and i i would have uh, um kind of pushed back my program you know, yes. so that view I share that program and I I, I, I I push my program back until that was finished. So, you know, viewers could hear what uh, and, and it was a really, really good program. Um, what yeah. do you if you were to make about four points that that they drove home on that program that you thought was important? What would those points have been? I think. Um it clearly recognized the importance of um, consultation, um, something that in the past was neglected. I think also the um, this they they spoke of, of welcoming development, uh, regardless of where it's coming from, which is um, encouraging. Um, the 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 whole idea of having more um, consistent consultation with the community is is testament to the small man and all the other programs that are going on they realize the importance of it and when people say that it's just a talk shop they have to realize people do what they could get away with and these leaders realize now it's a changing of the guard and people are more um you know open to expressing their views and their discontent and also their pleasure so they'll be forced now to face the public you know Wonderful. um i was uh, i don't i joined the program late so i was uh, i was surprised that the mckenzie sports club um leadership was not there i i was expecting them because i um i think they were supposed to be one of the stakeholders in, in the meeting but they weren't there uh, or maybe they left i'm not too sure because i joined late but you know no they weren't there. As I, it was made clear oh, they, they weren't, weren't there. there they they, they, oh. they refused to go from my understanding oh. of what has transpired i mean the, oh, the panel right. was the panel was a bit decent in how they put things across but the message one would have gotten the message that there's a non-cooperation um happening in terms of consultation of, of of the willingness to have consultations with the community and that would have smacked i believe uh and mr bino would have touched on that that was smacked at uh, the initial statement that that one of the actors um in this project the, yeah. the, the, the the rehabilitating of mackenzie sports club would have would have um voiced about the community um and and, and and in the context that the community had no persons in the community had no vision except for two two 
two persons and so on. Um, and the community is now up in arms, and that was mentioned by Mr. Bynum, and it was dealt with extensively by Mr. Figuera. And I think across the, the diaspora and at home, people are angry by by those statements and, and, and some have proffered that an apology should be made before we, we, we should even sit down and discuss anything in relation. Or what are your thoughts? Well, I think any right-minded would recognize when they're wrong and apologize. You know, a real man is always capable of accepting his wrongs and apologizing. So definitely, um, I might be an optimist, but I think it might be coming in the near future. The, of the final thing before we go and before I, um, you know, I love you to yeah. to give your closing, um, whatever you wanted to say to the to the community and the diaspora. Um, yeah. It was also mentioned. I I, I think I, you said you got on the program a bit late, but they were talking yeah, about yeah. if Linden is to have a facility, it must be an international you know, type of facility, state of the art international. It should host, it, it should house, sorry, um, the different disciplines in sport, indoor and outdoor, um, uh, you know, um, facilities, uh, including a, a, a proper swimming pool and, you know, a volleyball area, cricket pitch, football field, basketball courts, and so on, and that, that the location at Mackenzie Sports Club would be unsuitable for that, and, and recommendations were, you know, thoughts were being thrown out on where it should be, Millie's eyed out, and so on. Do you think that the emphasis should now be placed on having engagements with the Chinese and, and all those uh, uh, that are playing a part in the investment to to rehabilitate the Mackenzie Sports Club. Do you think that there should be further discussions with those to say perhaps we should go in the direction of making this something bigger and more suitable for um, the youth? Uh, at, at I'm not quite sure if, if, if at this stage we could make it more bigger. I, I, if an offer is made, we could definitely should be able to have a say in terms of where the location um, would be best suitable for such a facility. Um, I think in its present state, uh, parking would be an issue. And, you know, which sports facility in the world has um, limited parking? It's, it's a no-no. You just have to have um, proper parking and and then you got to look at the electrical um infrastructure that would have to be um, put in place is you're going to be is is it is that facility um is the infrastructure there uh how 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 are they going to um, modify it so i mean i think having dialogue and, and 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 discussion over it would only help to 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 foster a better um environment and a better facility so you know i guess people might say that um, time doesn't permit but it's better to get it right now than to regret later and you know i just think there's a lot of space in the community so that works in their favor so it's just a matter of finding the right place to put it and avoid all the you know the sacrifice you'd have to make in terms of com compromising in terms of space and and so for displacing possible residents, you might have to do in terms of, uh, I think um, the last thing I heard that that facility would not have a cricket pitch. So if, if you have a larger area that could accommodate that, then it might make sense to do that. I, I totally agree with that. Um, looking at Linden and Region 10, you would have said earlier that, that there, there, you know, there weren't that sort of drive and force of young people in the community now wanting to be involved, wanting to have a voice 
in the direction of, of, of seeing development, wanting to have that voice and to speak out, to hold our leaders accountable, regardless of who they are or which side of the fence they're on. There, there seems to be that spirit in the air at the moment, um, which, is, uh, which is, is something that we're feeling, like, a, like Bob Marley said, a natural mystic blowing through the air. Um, do you think it will continue? And many are saying, basically, talk shop, talk shop. What would you recommend? What would you recommend in terms of taking ideas and, tor and, 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 and turning them into action, so to speak? We present those ideas, but we, we, we don't stop there. We say we want them to, to take form. We want them to... To, to become life um, and so on. What are your thoughts on how do you think we can go about doing that? I think definitely um, it's going to, it's, it's a step in the right direction. I, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell what the future holds, but um, from my standpoint, I think um, based on what I'm seeing, the recent developments is that definitely people are taking note. You have the attention of the leaders and um, at the end of the day, people, you know, I guess are just fed up um, of holding the unclean end of the stick and just want better for themselves, their children, and the future generation. So I think um, they're, they're voicing that. And also, you got to look at the evolution of technology. Before, to have these discussions, you would have had to um, be privileged to, to get um, your time and so forth. So. Now we can just pick up a phone or a tablet or a MacBook and just um, you know get online and have information right now. So, yeah, yeah, so so it's just a movement at a time and and how things have evolved. So um, leadership and management will also evolve and and fortunate or unfortunately that's the situation we're in now. So the people that are indifferent to that we're gonna. I'd have to shape up or shape out. I mean, that's Wonderful. just it. Yeah. It's, finally, it's just, uh, yeah. And, and finally, Mark, uh, Mark A. Jordan here in Voice of the Diaspora. Um, you will be seeing more of him uh, and you will be hearing more about uh, former PC boy, uh, President's College boy. Um, uh, I mean, I choose not to say that. You have to well, you, I can say that. And, and a young man who, is, who, is, who has um, yes. pursued education yeah. and, you know, uh, and someone that we should be proud of and so i'm happy to have him on this program because i know that you know this is what we have to do the part we have, to do. we have to bring the young people in and we have to listen to them and begin to emulate them because those of us who who were there before there is nothing much for these young people to emulate <laughs> and so it yeah, is actually true. sad it's actually sad that they have to pick up our burdens that we have left to, to, to create a world that is better for them and the generations that are coming after. And, and we want to facilitate that part in terms that they, children and children, children, wouldn't have to pick up any board, but to build on what they would have contributed. Um, you, 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 you may have looked at the, the brief discourse with uh, Akalora Thomas and, and, and the plight that many single parent family uh, um, facing in, in, in at Linden, as many single parents families are facing a, a, a plight which is a destitute one. Um, we see the conditions that that women are living under, some mentally challenged, um, but the, the sad part is the children. Uh, that are that are left um, to live under conditions in which, you know, they they are actually sleeping in in, in 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 a place where reptiles have access and so on. Let us go to this clip quickly before we wrap up, and I want you to give your view on it. Where that really needs the help. This is what Feed America is all about: to come in to help the poor communities like this here. And um, this is where oh, and this is where this is where she lives at, brother. Young man, that's where she lives at. Oh, wow. I can't wow. go. I'm taking all of oh, the channel. Oh, God. Hey, 
can see that sight. Yes, yes, you should really need help. We're taking all of the child out. Oh, God. Not, not, not. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're here yeah. to do. We it's, uh, personal. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, hi, how are you doing? Hi, hi how are you doing? How are you doing? What's your name? What's your name? Right. Yannick Stewart. Yannick Stewart. Oh, oh, this is, what's, so what's going on? You live here? Yes. This is your house? Yes. Can I get a look around? Wonderful. Wow, wow. Welcome, okay, welcome. okay. This is where she lives here. Um, this is where she lives that day. Yes. This is what we're talking about. If we come to help, you know. Uh, there's no windows. There's just a door. <laughs> And um, tell me about your family. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your family. How much kids you having? Eight, eight, eight kids. Eight, eight kids she's having. Father's that gone, so it's wow. up to me alone. Even if I say I want to go and do a yard, uh -huh. I will still have study them to the foundation in the place. Wow, so wow, 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 wow. So you need help. Wonderful. What, what could we help you with in terms of these kids, these eight kids? What would you like? You I like, say you want some clothes for sure. Um, so what is the, the, the roof? The floor, I'm trying to see if you could help you. Do you have a stove for your stove? There's not many nights to see serpents. Wow. Yeah. So this is your bed here, you like that one? Yeah, there's one. There's oh, this one, and this is. Oh my god. This is where the eight kids sleep. This is where the eight kids sleep. Two minutes to, to, to give you a view. Oh, man, that's disheartening. You know, hopefully, um, you know, we all could come together and help to alleviate that suffering. Uh, uh, speechless. I don't know what to say. It's According to Akaloros, fifty percent of Lindeners that are um, living under those conditions, uh, and I, I, it's very hard to believe. It's very hard to believe, and you know, when you look at the background of things. Eight children, men out there who would have, you know, want to satisfy an immediate desire, take take advantage of someone who may be mentally challenged or who, who is, is living in destitution. And the society seems so cold and uncaring and unfeeling that, you know, the law can't say, you know what, we will pursue these men so that they can support their children even your you know in in forward thinking societies um people do that i'm saying that maybe our our um relevant authorities uh, our relevant authorities may be unaware of these things so um bringing this to the fore now i want to say and i i, I want to know what you think about it because we're wrapping up now i want to make a call to the welfare department and the relevant authorities at linden to find those men and even if they have to do dna for those children you want for uh, to, to ensure who the fathers are if they're really the fathers that that, that they, they must be uh called to to contribute to the to the welfare of and the upkeep of those children this is how our society should act and operate and this program is now calling on the relevant authorities because i'll tell you this mark yeah. if one family is failing under those condition or those conditions it's a reflection on the society and its approach to how we deal with those who need our 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 support or care or help and i am not saying that our relevant authorities know i know that the family may not go hungry because there's a lot of love amongst the ordinary people like akalora is doing tremendous work and we have to support it so when some people say that we are a backward community or wherever it's wrong because they, they haven't been left to die but we do whatever little now we can do much more in our advocacy to see whether this sort of situation will be improved. It's Black History Month. In the context of this conversation, in the context of this conversation, um, you have one minute to, to, to be frank and outspoken in relation to whether the plight of black people at Linden, uh, you know, is one that, that, that is, is, is alarming and appalling and what should be done. Thank you.
I think, um, thank you, Ryan. Um, I think, um, yeah, it's Black History Month. It's it, it should be a time for reflection. Each one of us could look ourselves in the mirror, and uh, you know, it might sound cliche, but the education is always one of the avenues to um, combat poverty. So, even if we're poor, you know, we have to try to muster all the resources and you know to ensure that we try to get the best education we can. Also, as a people, we have to, you know, try to work harder and to, and to be more self-sufficient. I know the, the, the leaders are in place and they're supposed to be there for a purpose, but, you know, it is what it is. You got to play the cards you're dealt with. And sometimes we just have to, you know, we have to try to dig deeper and work harder and make representation. And I think we're, we're doing that. and. Um, I mean, I like to look at the glass as half full, so I think um, we're taking a step in the right direction. So hopefully, you know, we're going to see improvements. Mark A. Jordan, thank you for being on Voice of the Diaspora. You came on on short no notice, and I appreciate, you know, um, that you would have taken that time, you know, and that, that shows your commitment that you can recall at the last minute and still, you know, make that effort to be here. Uh, we'll be hearing more from you as time goes by. I want to say to my viewers, uh, I like to share garnet silk so there's light for everyone to shine. You, you yeah, understand? Yeah. And I, 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 want, I want us to know that we can't just talk things, we have to act. And we have to we have to show that love and support to each other, and 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 so um, on 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 that basis, I want to say thank you very much, and do have a pleasant evening. I want to leave my viewers with this clip. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Stay safe. Thank you, Mark. We really yes, need the help. This is what Feed America is all about: to come in to help the poor communities like this here. And um, this is where oh, and this is where this is where she lives at, brother. Young man, this is where she lives at. Air. Oh wow, wow, wow. Oh God. Hey, I can see that sights. Yes, yes. She, she really needs help. Oh God. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're here to do. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, hi. How are we doing? Hi, how are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? What's your name? What's your name? Yannicka Stewart. Yannicka Stewart. Oh, oh, what's, what's going on? You live here? Yes. This is your house? Yes. Can I get a look around? Wonderful. Wow, wow. Home, okay, okay, okay. This is where she lives here. Like um, this is where she lives that day. This is what yeah. we're talking about. If we come to help, you know. Uh, there's no windows, there's just a door. Oh. And um, tell oh, me about your family, tell me about your family, tell me about your family. How much kids you having? Do you want to do it, Raduela? Wow. I know. Even if I send one girl, she can't do it. I still have studied the condition of the place. Wow, 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 wow. So you need help. Wonderful. What could we help you with in terms of these kids, these eight kids? What would you like? You like, see, you want some clothes for sure. Um, so what is the, the roof? The floor, I'm trying to see if I can help you. Do you have a store for your store? Many days, not many nights, you see serpents. Wow. 